The leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniyeh, has been in Egypt for talks on halting the fighting with Israel to allow humanitarian aid into Gaza. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has once again ruled out a ceasefire until Hamas is eliminated and the remaining hostages are freed. Several countries, including Germany, classify Hamas as a terrorist organization. Meanwhile, there has been no let-up in attacks on the Palestinian territory. There is no end to scenes like this in the Gaza Strip. Several Israeli airstrikes hitting the southern city of Rafah. Survivors rush to barely functioning hospitals with little hope for safety anywhere in the territory. All of a sudden, the first rocket landed, destroying everything. By the time the second rocket hit, we weren't able to see anything in the house anymore. We barely made it out. The whole house fell down. We found a woman who had just given birth via cesarean and were able to drag her out with her baby girl, who was choking. She was taking her last breaths. There she is over there. The UN estimates that nearly 60% of all Gaza's infrastructure has been damaged or destroyed, and more than 90% of the population displaced. As the smoke from the latest bombardment fills the sky above Rafah, some of them share their desperation. We came from the north, and they said, you should head to Rafah. It's a safe place. They followed us to Rafah and hit us. Where is it safe? Where should we go? I wish for a complete ceasefire, an end to the death and suffering. It's been 75 days. People are still getting killed. There are still people under the rubble. I don't hear from many people. Communications are out. Negotiations are taking place that could lead to a new temporary truce. But many differences still need to be overcome. Qatar-based Hamas leader Ismail Haniya traveled to Cairo on Wednesday for talks with Egyptian officials. The group, which is considered a terrorist organization by multiple countries, says it only wants a permanent ceasefire. Something ruled out by Israel, with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying that is impossible until Hamas is defeated. Now, Efrat Machikawa is from Israel. Her uncle Gilad Moses is still being held hostage in Gaza after being kidnapped during the Hamas terrorist attacks on October the 7th. His partner, Efrat, was killed in that attack. His wife and his partner's daughter and two granddaughters were among the hostages released during the week-long ceasefire. The Islamic Jihad militant group has just released a video showing Gilad in captivity, the first sign of life uh, since his abduction. Uh, thank you so much for, for coming in, Efrat. So, this, this is Gadi. Gadi. Yeah, Gadi Moses, my uncle. Um, we had no news for 74 days and learned last night from a video released that he is captured by the Islamic Jihad. We just heard. It um, was hard to watch, but... We are people of hope, so seeing him alive gives us hope. So you had no idea until that, uh, that 74 days, no contact. So how did this uh, video get to you? Well, I'm not so sure as I was here, but um, I just got tons of messages on my phone last night and uh, realized uh, it was released. And then um, I was sent the video, actually. Um, I'm here in Berlin for the event that took place today at the Berlin Orchestra, uh, Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, and who was very, very touching. I have to really thank them for the wonderful event we held. And, um, what was the event? The news, what were you doing? The um, Berlin uh, Philharmonic Orchestra has played a concert uh, tonight. Um, that was uh, dedicated for the release of the hostages and for all the um, idea of having to think of what's going to happen next. And this was Palestinians and Jews together? Together, together, for humanity. Um, 
It's very important for me to actually stress the point that I'm here on a non-political issue. It's a human, humanitarian, human, human, um, human, not humanitarian, yeah, humanitarian issue. I think that the brutal at um, attack on the people, on the innocent people on that morning of October 7th was not only an attack on the Israeli Jews and Arabs and the Nepalese and the Thai and whoever was there, it was an attack on global humanity. It was an attack showing us the destruction that terror can bring to the world. And this is why I'm here to talk about it, to stress how terrible it was, how much we all need to be cautious and afraid, actually terrified, of what can happen with terror. And you, you gave a speech at the concert saying that you'll have to learn to trust again. What did you mean by that? Mm -hmm. You know, my profession deals with cultural diplomacy. And for years I taught in the academia um, all sorts of dialogue within diverse communities and um, um, communication among dif different people. Saturday, October 7th, was not only an attack on my family, their community, my community and my nation. It was an attack on my beliefs. I feel we are in a moral hell. And I think the message really, the global message should go anywhere because what happened there, the atrocities, the terrible stories that are too difficult for me to describe in words should be learned and then there was this crack, crack in trust in humanity, crack in trust of what I was preaching and teaching and working for all my life. And unless they're all back alive, I don't know how this trust can be rebuilt. So the return the safe return of this 136 people that are still alive in Gaza is a must. And it has okay. to be very quickly because they're, 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 they're dying there. So how do we bring that about? Tell me what you think of the Israeli government's efforts uh, to, to get the hostages back. It's the Israeli government and it's the international community. Well, let's start, um, with, well, let's start let's with Israel. Start. No problem. I think that with help and pressure from the international community and the talks we just heard that I'm very glad to hear with our good neighbors, the Egyptians, the Israeli government has to do all it takes right. to is bring doing, everybody. Is it doing enough? Is there more that it could be doing now? I think there is a shift in the last two days, and I believe, I want to believe that everything, but everything is being done because there isn't price. There isn't any price that can cover my uncle's life and the rest of the 135 people in Gaza. They have to be back So does, does, does Mr. Netanyahu therefore have to soften his line, this line that there will be no ceasefire until Hamas is destroyed. Our Prime Minister Netanyahu has to do everything. But he everything. would say that he is. Well, he will have to prove they're back alive at home. We so have to bring them back alive. If they do not come back alive, d does that, what does that, well, what does that say? I, I, is, that, would, is that a failure of the Israeli government? Is that a failure of Netanyahu? Is that Hamas being terrible, terrible people? If they, if they don't come back alive, what does that tell you? I told you, I lost trust uh -huh. in humanity, but I did not lose hope. 
So I don't even think of a scenario where they don't come back. Mm -hmm. They will come back. We are strong enough. We're people who cherish life. They will come back. The price might be high for some people to think of, mm -hmm. but whatever price it is, whatever price it is, the lives of the 136 innocent Israelis has no price. I, we're running out of time. I would like to just try and end on a hopeful note because I, I mentioned at the start, mm -hmm. that amongst all this horror that, that happened, the, mm -hmm. the, the killings and the kidnappings, mm -hmm. one glimmer of, of light and hope was that four of your family were actually returned in that, in that week-long ceasefire. I cannot imagine what that must have been like to be notified that they were coming and then to see them. It was um, a brief moment of joy and we're very, very grateful, but it will not be completed until everybody is back. So it's wonderful. And, you know, we all need to remember after their return, there is a long process of recovery. It will take very long time. And the echoes, the ripples of the pain and the sorrow and the mourning is enormous. It will take a long time for the trust, for the rebuilt. But as I said, we are strong. We cherish life and life shall overcome. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Efrat Machikawa. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much for having me. Thank you, Germany.